planter out. We're gonna go plant, aren't we? A little late for planting season. Oh, we're just getting started early. Yeah, real early for next year. Yeah. <laughs> I ought to clean out his planter, huh? Yeah, who's, who the hell doesn't clean the corn out at the end of the year? <laughs> Guys that are probably so far behind on spraying that he goes, hey, thankfully we're done with this. Let's go finish beans. It's like, I thought it'd be clean. So the Kinsey crew's here today. We're going to be actually upgrading the meters on the corn planter uh, from the EdgeVac meter that we've got to the True Rate meter. There's a couple of reasons that we're going to be doing this upgrade. Uh, we'll talk about all of them, but what should happen is, is that these new meters, the True Rate meters, will perform better than these meters will. They'll take less vac pressure, uh, take actually less rolling resistance, so actually the, the actual force that, like that one's really tough. The force to actually spin the meter itself. And we're going to jump in with Brad here and actually walk through how to upgrade from the edge vac meter to the true rate meter and the advantages of the true rate meter over the edge vac meter, maybe inspecting the edge vac meter and some of the wear points on this meter. And that's a big one that Kinsey wants you guys to know is that actually the parts for these edge vac meters, once they're worn, broken or anything that happens like that, they're sunsetting these parts, which means that they are not going to support these parts anymore. So this fall or this winter is a great time to start thinking about planting next year. If you have these meters to consider upgrading them to these true rate meters, because there's a chance that the parts might not be available as soon as they run out of them. <laughs> they might not be available if they're gone. <laughs> Andrew's making fun of my way I said that. Today we're working on upgrading Ben's planner from edge vac meters to our true rate meters. Uh, EdgeVac introduced in 2006, been around a long time, uh, getting to the point now where a lot of the parts are becoming obsolete and a lot of the things are no longer offered for repair parts. So came down to Ben's today, kind of look at the status of his meters, see where we're at and probably a good time uh, to upgrade again with a lot of those parts um, becoming obsolete. Of course, now that we're getting hopefully close to done with harvest, Now's a good time to already start thinking about the spring, looking at your components on the planter. We're going to kind of look at what the status is and condition of these meters, give you guys something to look at at home if you're running EdgeVac meters currently. Uh, we've had this update kit around for a long time, and hopefully this will be an opportunity for you guys to make that upgrade and get a better performing meter on your planter. So, of course, the EdgeVac meter, as we come apart, <clears throat> obviously only rotates one direction. When you take your cover off and some of the unique items with... Uh, our edge vac meter and some wear points that you need to pay attention to of course are the back of this vacuum housing so this vac meter of course our vacuum hose attaches to our housing here and it's physically drawing that disc against the meter housing of course creating drag and resistance and on the back side of this meter cover are little ribs so kind of think like the wear components or the wear ribs on the car tires uh, that you guys are running at home best way to know if really the housing and the disc is wore out uh, of course the first part is are there no ribs left so as you can see those ribs are pretty smooth the top part's getting pretty wore down there's not much left to it these aren't all the way wore out but they're getting close and of course with those wear grooves wearing it wears into the back side of the disc so you, know, you can take your fingernail and really feel uh, those grooves on the back side of the disc so <clears throat> take a look you can feel the grooves on the back side What's the negatives of the grooves? Well, first off, it doesn't create a real smooth seal, which of course can create vacuum leaks, cause more vacuum to be required, to have to turn the vacuum up on the planter. And more importantly, it creates a lot of drag, some more driveline drag and creates issues with just having that driveline have to turn harder, especially as you start to go faster. Uh, and of course, wears chains can cause driveline problems, et cetera. So these are getting to the point where they need to be replaced. So what you said about wearing, we were having to run more vac pressure this year, so we definitely started to notice that when I was planting. So what are the components that we get to keep from this meter uh, and transfer over to the new meter? So really most of the components here are going to be replaced as part of the kit. Now, of course, we're working on a bulk fill machine. If you had a standard hopper machine, it would include a new hopper in the kit. Uh, but really the update kit as a whole uh, comes with everything you need to do the conversion. What comes in the kit as a whole? Of course you have uh, the entire true rate meter assembly, which we'll go through as a whole here in a second. We then have a whole bunch of hardware and components. So of course the whole meter rides on really this holder, this meter housing holder. 
It comes with a new, new pop metal style meter holder. We'll, we will reuse the elbow that comes off of the mini hopper. We will use a new diffuser. We have a shim plate that goes in between the meter and this meter holder. And then we also have a meter support bracket that goes on there to support the new true rate meter. So that's all included in all the hardware. And then lastly, really this is just a hose guard that goes into the row unit, helps keep your hose, your vacuum hose away from your chain. And then of course your vacuum adapter to take your two inch hose down to your inch and a half connector that's on the true rate meter. So let's kind of walk through what we got to take off uh, off of this meter to kind of see better. We're just going to take off our meter cover, put that to the side. Uh, <clears throat> really the only thing we need to save uh, from this guy is this bracket that holds our meter cover. And we're going to of course take our uh, elbow from our bulk fill hose. We're going to take that off and put that on the new housing. New diffuser, really the only reason for the new diffuser, of course, if you look at the old one and the new one, the old one had this angled piece in it, really just acted like a baffle to help limit the uh, seed pool in the meter. Don't need it in the newer style true rate meter, the baffle's kind of built into the meter itself. So is the seed pool the same size or is it uh, smaller on the true rate meter? It's actually a little smaller just because it allows it to be clean, it cleans out better. Yep. We were dumping out some corn from, uh, earlier planting and realize how much was in there, it's a quarter of that now. So it cleans out a lot better, easier to change between uh, crop types. Okay, so diffuser on, hopper cover on, really the next part is to put the entire meter on. Again, comes with, it's a complete unit right out of the box, comes with your new sunshade at the bottom. Uh, just because again of its new design and being better supported, it also comes with this meter support bracket that goes on uh, the new mini hopper holder It's a tight fit and that's really by design. What's the advantage for me to have these newer meters? So a couple things we talked about early is wear components. So now that we talked about, of course, that this housing is your vacuum seal. If we look at our true rate meter, of course, we have a much easier mechanism to take the meter off. There's just a lock tab at the top, quarter turn, and this guy comes off. Of course, the big difference if you look at the edge vac to the true rate is there actually a neoprene seal on here. So the disc isn't fully pulling against this housing. So the housing itself never wears out. We're always riding on uh, the seal. So provides a lot better sealing surface, allows you to run lower vacuum. So of course, lower horsepower requirements, lower hydraulic requirements, all those type of things come into with the true rate meter. Of course, the other big benefit, if we look at uh, the corn disc, of course, again, what's holding the disc onto the meter versus the edge vac is it's physically locking itself into with a quarter turn lock. Okay, that guy held on with a three, three hub, but of course your vacuum cover is riding on there. It's creating all sorts of drag. So if you look at rolling torque on this guy, you lock that guy down and you turn, turn this, you know, it almost leaves a dent in your thumb. You can take one finger and turn this guy. So, it's a quarter of the rolling torque on this one compared to this one. It's even half of a finger meter. So it's really easy to operate. <clears throat> it's obviously held in place. Longer wear life components. You're talking four to 600 row acres of life expectancy on this seal. Uh, and of course it's very focused vacuum as well. This whole housing was your vacuum chamber on this meter. So having a very dedicated vacuum location allows us to run lower vacuum as well and get the same performance. Of course, our true rate meter, we've said it's 99% accurate up to eight miles an hour in the field uh, and a lot more forgiving than the edge vac meter. A little more fine tuning required on an edge vac to consistently get that performance on the true rate. And yeah. you guys test all these meters before they leave the factory? Absolutely. As soon as everyone's assembled, every meter goes on a test stand and make sure it adheres to the 99% accuracy before it ever leaves. So there's actually corn run through the meter before it ever gets to your farm, you bet. Easy to take apart, we talked about our quarter turn lock disc. Of course, we use a, a 40 cell pocketed disc compared to the 39 cell on the edge vac. Of course, if you look at it too, uh, smaller diameter disc, okay, but has one more pocket in it, which allows it to turn slower 
especially as you get into higher speeds, which again allows us to do that 99% accuracy. Our singulator at the top, of course, we have an adjustable brush style singulator on this guy. On our true rate meter, it's more of a plastic bladed style. And of course, there's numbers on the top. So for corn, for example, setting number two uh, is for corn. And then you have three micro adjustments in the middle. So there's three bars. The thicker bar is more aggressive. The thinner bar is less aggressive. So if you have a real small seed, to say like a 35 pound round that's real small, you're probably going to move it to the thicker bar. If you have a really large 56 and 60 pound round, you'd obviously use the smaller bar. They're micro adjustments, but everything for corn is done inside the two. And again, you can run a lot lower vacuum. You know, your 18 to 20, you know, really 17, 16 will perform great uh, on a lot of seed sizes, again, up to uh, that eight mile an hour. Speed so range. other than corn and soybeans, what crops does this support? This one supports very similar to our Edgevac, cotton, uh, sugar beets, milo. Uh, we have a cover crop wheat disc uh, that a lot of guys use. And of course we have just one corn disc for all corn. Uh, our soybean disc, this one is a 120 cell disc for our 30 inch row uh, planters behind us. Of course, if you have a split row machine, it would just be a 60 cell disc, uh, just like before. So a lot of crop options with this one. Really, it's a direct replacement uh, in the market. If you have an edge vac and are currently planting alternative crops and just corn and soybeans and milo and kind of our high, high volume sale ones, this one directs replacement and has a wheat disc okay. as well. So a lot of enhancements to it. Besides the you know, lower drag, uh, better seal reliability, durability, and longevity, uh, one of the big f factors in design of this meter is where the seed or the vacuum stops. So think about your seeds coming around here and it's of course dropping down here into our seed tube and down into the seed trench. Uh, we've really focused on where the vacuum is cut off. So our vacuum is cut off really right, right here at that three o'clock position. What that allows us to do is as the seed comes around and the vacuum is cut off here, the seed is really a zero velocity drop off of the disc. So as you speed up or slow down, no matter what, that seed's dropping at a zero velocity, which really reduces the uh, possibility of tumbling or rattling down that seed tube. If you look at our edge vac and where that guy physically is uh, cutting off the vacuum, it's way down at the bottom, so at the four or five o'clock position. If you think about that disc, as you drive faster and it's cutting it off later, it actually can get some velocity and start to fling that disc as you go faster. True rate, it doesn't matter your speed, it's always the same every time. So just a lot more consistency, a lot easier to adjust, set to get that 99% performance that you expect in the field. So a lot of enhancements, a lot better wear life, uh, and again, that lower driveline torque, better consistency, especially at higher speeds. So a lot of enhancements over this guy. Uh, and if you think about all the parts in here, really more importantly, the parts are just not gonna be available anymore. And uh, no, time, no time better than the present to get ahead of that and take your time now, inspect your planner, get upgraded to the true rate before spring of next year. And the other thing we have to change is uh, the vacuum adapter at the end. And the other reason for that is it's a two inch uh, elbow, of course, going into the meter. Of course, as I said earlier, we're going straight into the meter now. So your new adapter again comes in the kit. We're gonna do the same. Just push that guy on. Always recommend to put the vacuum uh, coupler on first. Of course, as you see, it goes on the bottom horn of the meter. Push our bracket, our hose to the side. Put that guy down. Lock it in and we're ready to go. So we're gonna to continue to blow through trying to actually get this planter upgraded here. But for us and with this planter, we're running an in-command 1200 with it, which this planter has a planter monitoring module on it. And I was talking with Brad that one thing, something else that we're gonna try and do for an upgrade on this planter going into next year, when I plant, I can just see if how the meter's performing in terms of a percentage. So if it's planting more, or not planting enough or planting within a certain percentage range. If you're following me there, I can't actually see the skips and doubles, which is something that I'd really like to see because I should be able to really dial in the singulation with these true rate meters. So what, what are they doing to actually get uh, some of those upgrades or what do I have to do to 
possibly get the actually like a seed to monitoring module onto this? Yep, so last year with uh, in conjunction with the in command upgrade, the PMM on there, which was our of course factory MUX bus harness uh, Kinsey sensor. Uh, sensors that are on there. The software has been updated in that PMM to now show you skips, doubles, and accuracy, just like a STMM module does for MagLeader, but using Kinsey's proprietary seed sensors. The wild card would be have to have sensors uh, in the later generations, really after 2015 model yep. year, in order to have that functionality. So if you have a PMM, kind of like yours today, you yep. put new seed sensors on it, an in command, new, latest software. And you get skips, doubles, and row by row mapping just like you do from STMM from Ag Leader. And I actually would could have considered to actually go into the STMM on this planter. The issue with that would have been is that I would lose my vac pressure. And uh, no, you never you don't show you lose your ASD pressure, how how much pressure you're pushing out to the row units, and I'd lose the bulk fill scales on this planter. Yep. Those I would lose in that information, and I didn't really want to lose that information. So it sounds like now with an upgrade of the sensors on the planter, I can actually have everything that I want. So yep. this is that's a, that's a major win. Yep. So and, and of course any later model one that had edge vac uh, or the vacuum sensors built into your ag leader, you get to keep those too yep. with the later generation one. So all your auxiliary sensors stayed, no different than what you have today. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Yep, so that's the upgrade. It takes a little bit of time to do. I think we're gonna plant, perform better, but again, a big uh, a big consideration for this is that the parts for the edge vac meters aren't gonna be available for much longer because they're not gonna support them. So if you're starting to wear out, you might wanna consider making the upgrade there. Another thing that we did off camera is that some people would notice that when we're planting that there's a pulsing sound coming from our vacs here. So we installed, uh, kind of back pressures it to the back so it can't freewheel. So what you were hearing was the actual, like the, the back freewheeling. So it pressure, pressure, freewheel, pressure, pressure, freewheel. Uh, fix that up. So there's a couple upgrades that are still gonna happen, uh, especially with this new monitoring system. I'll take you guys along with that when we get to there. But thanks for Kenzie for coming down, helping us get set up with the new true rate meters. We appreciate you guys. And like always, we'll see you in the next one.